Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyRodAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our SpecFlow course. And this will be talking about working with tables for data-driven testing. And this is one of the most important concepts to understand how we can leverage the power of SpecFlow scenarios to run tests with multiple values to be passed as an input data for our actual test itself. So let's see everything in action. In our last video, we discussed how we could actually create a super simple scenario using the predefined scenarios from the specflows template feature file and in this video we'll see how we can create a new scenario and start creating the tables and use the tables to pass the data and, and play around with it so for doing that all i'm going to do is i'm going to start writing a new scenario so once i start typing the scenario over here you will see that it's going to bring me up this particular scenario and then you can say that uh, working with tables something like this so this is the scenario name that you can give in and then you can type the given so i'm gonna say the so pretty much exactly the same step definitions that i have i'm probably gonna cheat copy pasting all these values over here but just that instead of the value that is sitting over here saying given the first number is 50 and the second number is 70 something like this i could potentially use a table over here and i'm gonna say that given i input following numbers to the calculator something like that and i'm gonna use a pipe symbol over here and i'm just gonna say numbers something like that so this is the column name for the table which i'm gonna be creating and i'm gonna input two numbers over here the first number is gonna be 50 and then once again a pipe symbol and the second number is going to be 70 and then one more pipe symbol and you can see that all the formatting alignments are all going to be happening for you automatically by specflow tool so you don't have to worry about aligning anything you can see that there is a space between the number numbers and this particular uh, pipe symbol so everything is automatically happening for you which is great and now you can see that this particular step is not defined so we need to define it so let's define the step i'm going to copy and you will notice that this time there is a table as the argument for this particular parameter and this is the type that we are going to be working with so this type is basically a spec flow table type which is responsible for you to work with the tables in spec flow and once again this is a pending step method which means we need to implement the step itself so let's see how we can implement it i'm going to copy this method to the clipboard and then i'm going to go all the way to the step definitions over here I'm going to paste it and you will see that it is coming up for me automatically and before starting to work with the table itself what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go back to my feature file that we just created over here this one and you can see that it actually has got something called as number of 50 and 70 something like this so if i want to really work with a number of 50 and 70 what i could potentially do is I could able to use something like create set so I could do something like var data is equal to table dot create set and if you hit control dot you will see that we will be in this package called as tech talk dot spec flow dot assist so we'll be using this particular package if I hit control dot and you will see that I can actually create a set with a specific type in it so I need to give a type of what type that i am going to be creating so you can see this is going to be accepting a generic type here so now you can ask me like what is the type that we need to pass in so what type can it really accept over here well that is something we need to create over here within our code something like this so i can go create a simple record type like a value type and then i'm going to say calculations and then I'm going to create a property of int of numbers, something like this. And over here, I can type the calculations, just close the parenthesis, something like this. So once I do this way, what happens is it is going to create a set for the calculation type. And the reason why I'm even creating the create set is because we have two rows over here like 50 and 70 and then we need to actually create a set over here 
And similarly, if you're going to have just one value, then you can probably create something like create instance for that matter. Uh, so I will talk about that while we discuss about the create dynamic set and create dynamic instance later on. But for now, this is the create set that we have got. In order to print this value, I can just do a console.write line and I'm going to say the numbers are or the number is something like this. And over here, it is going to accept a value from the data that we are actually getting in. So I can just do a for each loop, something like this. And because this is going to be a set, it's going to be an enumerable type, as you can see over here. So I can just do data of the item and I can just put this code over here and I can do something like this item. And if I hit dot, you will see that you will get the numbers. The numbers is nothing but this particular property of this record type. That's it. So you can use a class type if you want to, but record is the lightweight value type of C sharp. So I'm actually using this. This is very, very straightforward as well. So I can do that. All right. So once this is there, I can then see if that value is going to be printed for us on the table. So I'm just going to go over here, working with tables. I'm going to run this particular scenario right now. You will see that the value is going to be coming up for us over here like the number is 50, the number is 70. So this is happening because this create set of the calculation type is actually bringing up this value for us. And if you're going to just print only one value, probably like only one row uh, instead of two rows, you can actually use something called as create instance method. Now all these create set and create instance method are actually sitting in this package called as tech.spectro.assist. That is something you need to remember. Uh, and that's where things are going to be happening for you over here. So this is how we could actually see that we could able to work with the tables. But the next package, which I really wanted to show you is the create dynamic instance where you don't really have to create this record type or the class type just for getting the values out from it. So you can probably even remove this whole things over here and then you can go all the way to the dependencies, go to manage NuGet package and go to browse and search for specflow.assist where you have something called as assist.dynamics. So you can go ahead and download this particular package. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a keyword called as dynamic because this is a dynamic keyword. So let's say dynamic and then I'm just going to use data. And this data is going to be holding the value coming up for us from the table, which is going to be table. And once I hit dot, you will see that that is not going to be any method that I'm looking for. I'm actually looking for a method called as create dynamic set. So if you just try to type like create dynamic set, something like this, you will not actually see that particular method coming in because this is an extension method, which is sitting in the tech.spectro.assist. So if you hit control dot, you will see that it is going to bring you up that particular namespace tech talk dot spec flow dot assist over here. So that's what I'm going to be adding in. So let's try to hit control dot add this particular uh, namespace. So it is currently added for us in this particular class file. And now I can start working with this particular probably it's not data, it is data because it's multiple data. And now I need to print this particular value. So how I'm going to do is because this is going to be like a set of data, like an enumerable data, I'm going to do the probably and for each. Uh, and in the collection, I'm going to be entering this particular data and let the item be item directly. And then I'm going to write this control dot right line and I'm going to print this particular value, which is going to be using the string interpolation. Once again, the numbers are going to be the item and the number which I'm going to be printing is going to be from the column numbers column. So that is something which I need to give over here. So this numbers column is going to be coming up for us from this particular uh, tables column that you are seeing up over here because it doesn't know exactly which column that you're talking about from where you need to retrieve the data basically. So now it has everything. So let's try to run this particular scenario and see what's going to basically happen. So if I try running this scenario, you will see that the test is passed and you'll also see that there is a result for us coming up for that particular table 
along with the value that we have printed in the numbers are 50 and 70 and also there is a nice little table representation of that particular step definition coming up as well so it's a table step argument something like this and then it also prints the value that we are printing in so this value that we are printing in is actually this line right so yeah this is how we can actually work with a table using the dynamic set but what if there is a table which has got like a different structure for example when the two numbers are added then i'm probably gonna say then i see the result and few more details i mean this is something that's hypothetical so i'm just trying to add like a scenario over here where i'm gonna say results and logo in the calculator uh something like that there are like two columns this time and the result is going to be 120 as a result and the logo is going to be like because it's going to be a plus operation that we are doing in so i'm just going to say something like probably plus something like this or maybe what a, i'm just going to say plus over here just for the string argument purpose so i'm just going to save this guy over here uh, and let's try to define a step i'm going to copy the step and i'm going to paste it over here and once again this is table which is great but this time instead of the create dynamic set because it's going to be just like a one row that i have and it has two columns in it i'm going to be using what is called as a dynamic data is equal to or data is equal to table dot create dynamic instance so this method will help you to do that magic so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print console dot right line and I'm going to say that is going to hold the value and I'm going to say data sorry it's going to be a string interpolation I'm just going to put a dollar sign there I'm going to say data dot the column name is going to be result so the value is this one with oops with logo uh, and one more braces over here i'm gonna say data dot logo and i'm gonna save this and let's try to run this and see what is going to basically happen so if i try running it oops i think i have missed a double quotes over here that's the problem hopefully the code is correct there we go it is printing up and now if i just expand this result and you will see that this time it's printing me the table and also it prints me the result that the result is going to hold the value of 120 and the logo plus so these two values are also printing up using the create dynamic instance option so this is how we can actually work with tables to retrieve multiple data from the spec flow scenarios and use them for our test input and we can use the exact same idea for selenium test or playwright test or rest sharp test and stuff so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day